to make our project work and servable by the dev server or also later in production, we need to connect our index.html file to the output files which are generated. When using the dev server, they are only stored in memory, but they are still generated. We need to install a Webpack plugin for that. With npm install dash dash save dash, uh, save dev, excuse me, a lot of dashes. With save dev, we can install the html dash webpack dash plugin. This is a special plugin which allows us to connect our html file with our output. And webpack will do that automatically and inject our bundle script and so on into that html file. In the webpack config, we now add plugins. It's a new node on the root config level, plugins, and it takes an array as an argument or as a value, I should say. And now, first of all, we need to install or import, I should say, the HTML Webpack plugin. So I'll create a constant which I'll name HTML Webpack, Webpack plugin, but the name is up to you. And here I will require HTML Webpack dash plugin, the package we just installed. Now in the plugins array, I create a new instance of it, new HTML Webpack plugin, and we pass an object to the constructor where we configure this plugin. Here I'll set up a template. So the HTML file I want to use as a basis. And there of course I want to use my HTML file in the source folder. So I will point to it with their name and then I'll simply add slash source slash index HTML, constructing a path to it. So now we're pointing to the file we want to use as a template. I want to inject my stuff into the body that's extra configuration we can pass to the plugin here. And the output file, file name, should also be index.html. That's the file it will eventually generate, again, for the server, only in memory. Later, when we use a different workflow for building this for production, it will give us the real files we could upload to a server. So with that added, let's now restart npm start. Now we should get the connection from Webpack to the HTML file. So let's see if that then works. Let's revisit localhost 8080. And we do see an empty page now at least. We got some errors there though. Now these are React errors, which is a good sign. Our application seems to run. It's informing us that we likely forgot to export our component from the file it's defined in. Let's check, we're exporting the PISA image the PISA class-based component and the user component, but we never export the app. So let's add a default export to the app component. That's always the danger when building something. And now this looks much better. We see the users and now it becomes interesting. Let's click PISA. We see the PISA. And awesome is if we inspect the network tab and I go back to users and reload the app, watch the network requests. You see that zero JS file? That's our lazy loaded JavaScript file we downloaded. So lazy loading is working here and our React application is working. The styling also seems to kick in. If we inspect the PISA image, we see we're using CSS modules here and we got the styles we set up in our CSS files. Now, all I'll do is a quick and easy fix here on the links. I don't like the fact that we don't have a white space in front of the second link. Let's fix it like that, but that's purely cosmetical. What's important to us is we have a working workflow, a working project setup where we can create a React app with the features you learn about in this course. Now that's only the development workflow, the development server. If we now want to ship this app to a real server, we'll have to do some adjustments to the setup to have it prepared and to have it be optimized for production.